You ever wonder whether mystery writers have a life as interesting as their novels? Well, honestly, not often. Usually they just end up as rich guys living in a rich guy house with rich guy stuff. For Agatha Christie, though, things were a little different. While she was at the height of her fame in the mid-1920s, she would mysteriously disappear for 11 days. The world would be captivated, fearing the worst. What had happened to the young Agatha? A story unraveled that would be perfectly at home in the pages of one of her very own novels. This week on Cheeky Tales, we'll dive into the story of those days in December of 1926. Hello, boy. Hey. We're back. I'm boy. It's a normal episode this normal week. Normal episode. And it's definitely not less than 20 minutes after the last one. <laughs> no, no. It's a whole week later. <laughs> Fortnight, mm. even. Yep. No, um, we're back to regular programming this week with a story and not 38 stories. And Yeah, like test conditions. What do you know about this? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> Nothing. Uh, oh, uh, God. Uh, uh. <laughs> um. Yeah, Agatha Christie. Do you know any Agatha Christie novels straight away? When you said that, I was trying to think. Um, I obviously know of Agatha Christie. I'm just trying to think if I know of any of her stories. Does the name Poirot mean anything to you? Nope. Detective Poirot. Um, Murder on the Orient Express. Yes. Um, I do know that one. And Then There Were None. I don't know that one. Uh, that is actually the highest selling mystery novel of all time. Oh, really? Mm. Mm. Um yeah, Detective Poirot is probably her most famous character. Mm-hmm. Um, has had a whole bunch of movies, a whole bunch of TV shows. Um, Detective with a mustache. Oh, okay. Mm. You, of, you would probably know a bunch of Agatha Christie novels if I said Yeah, them. probably. Kind of yeah. like um, uh, the Pink Panther characters that kind of what mm. based off of like a satire of that character. Mm, somewhat. Mm. Okay, cool. Mm. Um, yeah, so I guess let's get stuck in. We are one fact checker short this week. <laughs> John's I'm doing my own novels. Yep. Oh, Death and Denial. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, that's, that's about it. Don't look too deeply yet because there's a reveal that I would like you to have at the end. Yeah, no, I'm not. N- none, none are ringing any bells except okay. for just. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of millions of books sold. Hundreds of millions. Mm. And I have read zero of them. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's not just movies. You know nothing about books as well. I mean, not all books. I'm, I'm trying to work my way through some of the classics now. Oh, yeah? Mm, like I've got Catch-22 I'm trying to read through The War of the Worlds. Oh, yes. That'd, that'd be a good one. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to get my way through Dune. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Classic sci-fi book. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. Okay. How did Agatha become famous anyway? She wrote books. Yep. Well, we'll start as we always do, far before anything actually uh, happened. Uh, anything interesting anyway. Agatha Mary <laughs> Why Clarissa Why are we talking Miller. about it then? <laughs> well, because it's called set dressing. Okay. Agatha Mary Clarissa Miller was born on the 5th of September in 1890. Ooh. As with many of the successful people of the time, uh, she wasn't born a pov and was born to a wealthy upper middle class family in Devon. Her parents, Frederick and Clara, would homeschool Agatha, despite sending the other children uh, of the family to a boarding school. For some reason, Clara and Frederick would decide that Agatha would not be taught to read until she was eight. Little Agatha wanted nothing to do with that, though, and by the age of four would teach herself how to read, kick-starting a lifelong obsession with reading that would eventually result in her career as a mystery writer. And she even wrote her first poem when she was just 10 years old. Have you got it there? No. I'm sure it wasn't great. Okay. Um, Aside from her academic education, she would also learn to play piano and the mandolin. Hmm. What is a mandolin, boy? It's like a violin. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a plucked instrument rather than I a believe so, bowed yeah. instrument. Yep. Agatha's father would, Sean will be screaming right now, <laughs> screaming, and I'm so glad he's not here. <laughs> Just left. Isn't it also a cutting device for slicing vegetables? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agatha's father would sadly that die one's in just for us. <laughs> yeah. When she was 11. Oh, sad. We're laughing. Yeah. You're telling us his yeah. dad's died. So. RIP to a real mm. one, uh, which would throw the family's finances into turmoil. 1911, did you say? 1901, okay. when she was 11. Thank you. I, I thought you said in 1911, no. when she was 11. I'm like, no, no. don't check out. Math don't work. Mm. Still, Agatha and the family would get by, with Agatha eventually being sent to boarding school in England before being sent to a French boarding school in Paris, where she would learn, uh, where she would focus on her piano playing. She would eventually tire of this, feeling that she didn't have the talent to make it professionally. 
and would give up on her goal of being a professional pianist. She would move back to England to complete her education and to be with her mother once more. Agatha would write her first short story at the age of 18. And with this and her other early works, she would focus on the paranormal and spiritualism, Mm. with some even being published later in her career under different names. I was going to ask if there were different names that she'd written under. Because I would imagine female authors at that time would not be well received or... Yeah, um, not so much, actually. It was, it was different names of the books. Okay. Um, but she did have pen names to start with. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not reference them because they're not all that important to the story. Um, but- I, imagine, I imagine that's a good way. Just have a couple of pen names for your first one or two books because if they're crap, then you just... Yeah. Don't... Give it up. No, yeah. don't give it up, but just... Yeah, as in a give couple up of, that name. A couple of yeah. practice books and then you just don't recognise them unless one just goes absolutely bunda and then you go, yep, that's me. And then, well, you're stuck with that name for the rest yeah. of it now, aren't you? I want to call myself Bugsy Tits McGee. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Bugsy Tits. <laughs> she would write her first full novel a little later, but would find no success in getting it published. She would get some feedback and go back to the drawing board. At the same time, she was starting to be a bit of a social butterfly, attending Mm. country house parties, hunting parties, dances, and roller skating. I'm going to see, I'm I'm starting to see where she got some inspiration for some of her stories here. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Murder on the Orient Express. She literally just went on the Orient Express and was like, I'm going to write a book about this. Mm. Yeah. Uh, She would find herself engaged at one stage, but would call off the engagement before marriage. In October of 1912, she would be introduced to an Archibald Archie Christie at a dance party. Archie was an aviator in the Royal Flying Corps and would quickly fall in love. Archie would be sent to war in 1914, and while on leave at Christmas time that same year, the two would be married. Yes, I remember reading the book, you know, uh, Mystery on the Western Front. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Christie would herself serve in the war effort, being a volunteer for the Red Cross in 1914 and 1915, as well as between 1916 and 1918. In 1918, both would leave the war and settle down in sunny London. How lovely. Hmm. During her time in London, Christie would publish her first book, The Mysterious Affair at Styles, which introduced the world to one of her most famous characters, Detective Hercule Poirot. 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 I I can't believe I I said it perfectly before and messed it up. Poirot. This story would also net her a five-book deal with the publisher, though she would later say that this was exploitative. Despite this, her fame would grow from here, though the novels she would release, uh, through the novels that she would release in the following years. She would also have her first and only child in 1919, Rosalind, giving Christie success in her career and her family life. Nice. She would also take part in an around-the-world promotional tour for the British Empire Exhibition, learning to surf with Archie in South Africa, then visiting Australia, New Zealand, Hawaii, and Canada. Things are looking good. Mm-hmm. So it's just for a while there, she's like, I'm going to be a surfer. Yeah, nice. And just went to all these surfing locations cool. and just hung out and be radical. <laughs> Chucking shuckers everywhere. Yeah, shuckers left and right. Sadly, personal turmoil wouldn't be far away with the death of her mother in April of 1926. Agatha had, been, Agatha had been incredibly close with her mother, and the loss sent her into a spiral of depression that caused her to need to take a recuperation break in a nearby village to recover from a breakdown. She reportedly stated that she had been overworking herself and needed to take a break, having struggled with writer's block while attempting to write her novel The, My- uh, the Mystery of the Blue Train. Is that... What turns into Murder on the Orient Express? No. Nah, okay. Just wrote two books about mysteries on trains, yeah, I guess. Fair enough. How was she overworked when she's out surfing around the world? Uh, yeah, I mean, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm guessing it's when she came back. She's like, oh, I've got to have a real job again. This I would sucks. love to be overworked and that's, <laughs> if that was the case. Yeah. Oh, I'm writing a novel. <laughs> Gosh. All this fame I've got is so annoying. Yeah, I imagine that's what George or R. R. Martin says at night. Oh, another novel to write. Just- being super popular. and Has he released one since Game of Thrones took nope. off? Has not. Yeah. Do you reckon at this point he's just not going to? I don't think he will. I don't think he'll finish that story. How can he? He's going to die before it. That or just it's not going to live up to people's expectations because everyone was so disappointed in the end of the show. Yeah. Well, to be fair, that wasn't based on what he wrote. It's not, no. So, you know, maybe he'll do a better job. He co-wrote a video game. 
since the show came out. Did he? Yeah, Elden Ring. Oh. Just won game of the year. Well, there you go. Good on him. Mm. Archie had also begun an affair at this time <gasps> with a girl that was 10 years younger than what Agatha. A dog. Mm. A woman named Nancy Neal. Dog. This resulted in Archie asking for a divorce in August of 1926. World famous author and you want to divorce her. That's just, that's just asking to be written about. Yeah. Who's the victim in your next book? Archie. <laughs> How did he die? Well, it was pretty gruesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just writes books about pilots being killed. While they had stayed together for a time, things reached ahead on December 3rd of 1926, when the two had fought over Archie's plan to spend a weekend away with his friends. Read into that, his side piece. Without <laughs> Agatha. <laughs> After the fight, Agatha would put their daughter to sleep and then silently leave the house, slipping away into the night. Kirsty, if you're listening, this is recorded evidence. I'm actually recording a podcast with Aaron. I'm not just slipping off. <laughs> into the night. <laughs> into the night. She's not going to listen anyway. Nah, she won't ever hear that. I realised I hadn't given a title to the sections. So I'm just quickly doing that. Really? Do you need to? Yes. Oh. The mystery begins. Mm. The next morning. Don't tell me Archie comes back and kidnaps her. For a romantic weekend away. No. Oh. Archie's a dog. Okay. There's no deeper no. meaning to Archie in this okay, No, No redemption for no, Archie. No, no, there is no redemption arc for Archie. <laughs> the next morning, Agatha's car would be found near the edge of a quarry. Arsehole Archie. It, look, it looked like it had been run off the road, coming to a stop only metres from the cliff face of the quarry. Oh, dear. Inside, police found a briefcase, Agatha's fur coat and her driver's licence. There was no sign of where Agatha herself had gone and no sign of a struggle. Immediately, the press got wind of the story and it became headline news. No doubt in part due to the irony of a mystery writer being missing in mysterious circumstances. Now, if this was to happen today, a mystery writer goes missing. Yep. Do you think it's taken seriously? No. I think it's just meme central. Meme central, people just going... This is just a publicity Fake. stunt yep. to, for a new novel mm-hmm. that's coming out. Yep. yep. 100% nobody takes it seriously. Was it taken seriously? In, so what are you in? We're in 19... uh, 1926. So we're not in the disgusting 30s yet? No. Not in our least favourite time Terrible in Terrible 30s. So did they take it seriously? One newspaper would even offer a £100 reward, approximately equivalent to £6,000 in 2021. A hundy P? And more than 1,000 police officers would take part in searching, along with 15,000 volunteers. Okay, so that uh, I'm going to say... They even used a plane for one of the first times to search. Um, I'm going to say yes. yes they it did was take taken it seriously. seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought the next couple of sentences okay. might help there. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, just, so just yes, a, they just, did. I just got an inkling that they mm. did take it seriously. Yeah. Just, I'm not sure what it was that did it, but... Yeah, just, there's yeah, a couple yeah. of hints. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 15,000 people. That's, yeah, that okay. is a lot of people. Yep. I mean, Probably the pop- because of the uh, £100 reward. I mean, the population back then would have only been about, what, 30 million of the world or something like that? Something like that. <laughs> um, after just three days, though. Yeah, true. The, the reward probably helps. Yeah. yeah. After just three days, though, the search would be called off after Agatha's brother-in-law received a letter from her saying she was going to spa in Yorkshire, going to a spa in Yorkshire, for rest and treatment. After, ac- after actually investigating the letter, though, the police would suspect that the letter was fake and would then almost immediately reopen the case. Just some classic police disorganisation there. Yep, like we just kind of were discussing in our madness mm. podcast. Early 1900s, people were just like, ah. Record keeping <laughs> was terrible. Whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, so it, I don't quite understand this letter, right? The brother-in-law gets a letter. So have you, do you have like excerpts from the letter there? Or no. It just said, I'm going to a spa. Yeah, it was basically like, hey, I'm just heading up to a spa in Yorkshire. Going to have some rest <laughs> and relaxation. Was the letter like made up of cut out letters put, put <laughs> like, together? I'm going to drawn a spa. by someone else. Yeah. Um, like a blood fingerprint on the bottom or something? No. So the okay. police had a look at it and they were like, ah, this isn't real. Whatever. <laughs> Get back to searching. Um, after seven days, the police were absolutely stumped. Oh, they had shock horror. Surprise. Yeah, no, right? 1919, uh, 1920s police, not the best. They had received hundreds of reports, uh, reported sightings all over the UK. However, none had led anywhere. They started to get a bit desperate and started using some, let's say, obscure methods. They brought one of, one of Agatha's dogs to the scene of the car crash to try and find a scent. However, the dog just whined, whimpered and lay down. 
<clears throat> not a great. Why one of her dogs? I don't know. Why not a, a trained dog? Yeah. yeah. I'm surely that was a thing by then. They would have had tracking dogs. Of course dogs. they had sniffer dogs back then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're just like, whatever. All right. Moving on. That's just, that's flummoxed to me. Police suspected Agatha was in London for some reason, speculating that she was disguised as a man. And and where did they get this from? Nobody's quite too sure. So someone's just come along and gone. Maybe she's dressed as a man. Yeah. That's a great idea, Junior. Let's run with that. Yeah. Put that on the news. This This screams to me of like- Crap, we've got nothing. We have, have to do something, something in the out. paper. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, now, dressed as a man in London. Done. Fair enough. They even attempted to get a medium to search for her, giving them one of Agatha's gloves, and even tried to do a seance at the scene of her disappearance. Just. And what do you know? Could you imagine? None of that worked. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine today's police? <laughs> Just policing. Like, hmm. You got, couple, <laughs> you, you got a couple of detectives in their blazers and their nice tra- trouser pants and all that. They go. Yeah, this one's going to need a seance. <laughs> yeah, bring in the medium. Twelfth time this month. <laughs> and they go back to the, like the headquarters and the p- police chief is there. He's like, oh, how, how did you go? Well, the seance didn't come up with anything. The Excuse seance me. didn't come up Excuse with anything. Excuse me. Did you just say seance? Yes, we did. And it got nothing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, I don't know what we can do This is the first time in my 40-year ca- career this hasn't happened. <laughs> 40 years I've been a police officer and you're telling me this is the first time a seance didn't work? Oh, man. Okay. We're not saying that happens. I just I just realised like two episodes ago we were thanking our local police for their service and now we're- Yeah. I mean, we're not saying they do it now. We're no. laughing about 1920s police. Okay. Yeah. Fair cool. On the 11th of December- <laughs> I just had the visual image of like three or four uniformed police members sitting around a Ouija board. <laughs> just like, are you moving it? Oh, I'm, I'm not, not moving, moving it. it. Oh, God. Billy, stop moving it. We told you this last time. I'm, I'm not, not moving, moving it. Up. <laughs> it's just that one guy like. Mm. Why does it keep spelling out dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> what a rude ghost. Oh. <laughs> on the 11th- <laughs> so good. On the 11th of December, the New York Times would report that there was actually a break in the case. Three letters that Agatha- Oh, no, here it comes. <laughs> Ooh, that's for you, Cheesy. <sighs> it's two o'clock in the afternoon. What are you doing? Yeah, Three letters that Agatha had left behind were found. The first was the letter for her brother-in-law. G. That we've already talked about. Oh, sorry. The second- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That yeah, it did. I thought you were saying he was a G. No. Like, I was like, what are you doing? The second letter was a K. GK. The second for her secretary, which contained details of her schedule, so nothing important. Mm-hmm. The third, and most interesting. It was chucked aside when they brought out the Ouija board. Oh, it's worse than that. The third and most interesting was left for her husband, Archie. Suspiciously, Archie would refuse to let the police see the letter and would burn it after reading it, stating it's got nothing of importance in it. Suspicious, Archie. Very suspicious. So he gets a letter and yeah. just burns it and the police are like, oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Mm. Yep. On December 15th, a banjo player called Bob Tappan at the Swan Hydropathic Hotel in Yorkshire would notice that one of the people dancing to his band looked oddly familiar. He would notify the police... And what do you know? It was Agatha Christie. Huh. Her letter to her brother-in-law was right all along. And the police hadn't bothered to follow that lead up at all. <laughs> Amazing So they didn't work. go to the spa that she said she was no, at? No, they didn't even check. They're just like, oh, this is fake. Uh, didn't even check. I'm paying them out for- They were looking for her in a wig in London, <laughs> holding <laughs> seances, and they didn't follow the one piece of evidence they actually had. Uh, or the letter the secretary had saying, I'm going to be at this spa for the next yeah. four days. Honestly. Agatha had somehow managed to get from her car to a train station, caught a train without any luggage, and made her way to the spa. Why'd she leave the car and the license? It's a mystery. Okay. According to the staff, she had a great time, dancing nights away and having spa treatments. She might have been left alone due to the fake name that she used, Teresa Neal. Oh, not Gagatha (laughs) Isti. No, but Teresa Neal. Remember the side piece's name? Nancy. Nancy Neal. Ah. Interesting that she used the last name of her husband's mistress. Mm. Don't you think? Hmm. No, Archie. I'm sure she just went 
I need a last name and that was the one that mm. popped up. That's what I think. Yeah. It was a name that was in her head. And yep. So she used it. Archie. Neo. <laughs> Archie would travel to the hotel to pick up his wife, but would be met with a stony stare from Agatha, who for some reason seemed to be suffering from memory loss. She didn't directly, uh, she didn't know who she was or uh, she didn't know who he was or even who she was. Or that he was cheating on her. Convenient. Mm. When the press got hold of this, they would directly question Archie on why Agatha might have used the name Teresa Neal, but he would deflect, saying she had no idea who she was and had placed ads in the newspaper asking for relatives of Teresa, uh, Therese, to come forward to help her discover who she was. Notably, Archie and Agatha would live apart when they got back to London, with Agatha living with her daughter while she underwent a course of psychiatric treatment to restore her memory. So they never got back together. Okay. And just accepted that she lost her memory and- No. Agatha would eventually recover her memory and officially divorce the dirtbag Archie in 1928. I love how you just chuck a bit of shade in your scripts. Yeah, well, screw Archie. She would go on to complete- Agatha didn't anymore. No. Nancy did though. (laughs) She would go on to complete the mystery of the blue train. She would also complete a lifelong goal and ride on the Orient Express train, which, as you might remember- inspired one of her most successful novels, Murder on the Orient Express. She would marry a second time to Max Mallowan, an archaeologist in 1930. Great name. Yeah. And this would be a much happier marriage. She would continue to write down novels like they were going out of fashion, writing up to three novels a year, but would never write about her previous marriage or disappearance, stating in her autobiography, it's not worth dwelling on. Okay. Quite British of her, I have to say. Yep. It's not worth dwelling on. Agatha might have been recovered from her disappearance and lived a happy life from then on, but there was still the question of what had happened during her disappearance. What did happen, boy? Are you going to tell me? Well, it's a mystery. Oh. She would never officially release what had happened. Well, thanks for from- listening to the podcast this week. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Outro music. Um, aside from one interview, she'd sure. never talk about it publicly, mm-hmm. so she never officially released what had happened aside from that, um, or whether she even knew uh, anything about what had happened. Or maybe she didn't, and that's why she's kind of like, I don't want to dwell on it, because she actually just doesn't remember. Yeah. There are quite a few theories, though. Mm -hmm. So let's open the book on three of them. Mm, Nice pun. Oh, the pun! Yeah, we forgot it. Oh, we haven't done it for a while, have we? No, we did it. You didn't do it last. No, I didn't. No. So, yeah, we've given up on that. <laughs> 2023, I'm bringing it back. All right, cool. It was only gone for like three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your theory off the bat? Was there any damage in the car? Uh, it looked like it had been run off the road. So, there was actual damage there to it? There was some body damage to it, yes. I'm going to say run off the road, she smacked her head, which has caused some sort of brain trauma, and that's she lost memory that way. Okay. Nice to know that you don't think she's faking it. Which is theory one. She faked it, bruh. The first theory is pretty simple, that it was a publicity stunt. She had released a novel earlier that year, and this theory states that she knew that her popularity would mean that her disappearance would make her a headline in the news, driving sales of her book. While on the surface this seems reasonable, the question remains that if she was already popular, why would she need to do this? The novel, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, had also been selling very well already that year. So the need to drive publicity wasn't really there. Agatha's secretary was asked if she felt that Agatha could fake her own disappearance, to which she replied, it is ridiculous. Mrs. Christie is much too much a lady for that. Agatha also reportedly hated the limelight, even experiencing stage fright. And it seems as though driving yourself into the spotlight, this might not be the best idea for someone like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't believe it. Supporters of this theory. I mean, she... Writes mysteries for a living. I don't think she's going to do that. Yeah. And she's already famous. Yeah. Right? Supporters of the theory, on the other hand, argue that driving publicity at any time is a benefit, especially to an author that was relatively relatively fresh in their career. This story might have been seen as a way to cement herself as a household name, driving future sales as well. Counterpoint. Mm -hmm. She told everyone where she was going. Yeah. Very early on. (laughs) It's not really- Here's where I'm off to. If, See ya. If the police just went there the first day, well, it was not going to be an 11-day mystery, was it? No. So I don't believe she's faking it. No. Just 
for that simple fact that she told people, I'm going here. Yeah. Uh, it should also be said that it wouldn't be that hard to disappear in this time uh, as there wasn't really a way to track anyone. Uh, and further, it's also not exactly a rock hard alibi to get your secretary to just say it's not possible for you to do it. Yeah, okay. But I mean, I'm with you. Like she literally wrote a letter and said, here's where I'm going. Wrote three. Yeah. Assuming telling each person where they were. What do you reckon was in the Archie letter? You're a dog. Yeah. Um, I know you've been messing around. Uh huh. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I reckon obviously, it was just like, you're a dog. Yeah, obviously, it's something he didn't like. Yeah. Maybe it was like, you can tell everyone where I am and end this, but then also you have to tell everyone. But if mm. you do that, I'll yeah. tell everyone what you've been doing. Yeah, something true. Like that. Probably yeah. Like some sort of ultimatum like that. And that feeds well into theory two. Archie was a dog, so Agatha dogged him. <laughs> As we heard already, dog. Archie was a cheating dog. And Agatha knew about it after he asked her, uh, after he asked to leave her. This theory states that Agatha timed her disappearance to line up with the weekend that he was planning to stay at his side piece, Nancy Neal's house, which would have been the dub- which would have had the double effect of ruining his dirty weekend mm-hmm. and also dragging him into the spotlight and humiliating him. Yeah. That's, Jar- a, that's a smart play. It does seem like one that makes sense. Jared Cade, Agatha's biographer, states that he believes that Agatha planned the disappearance in full and had assistance from her sister-in-law and childhood friend, Nan Watts. Cade suggests that after ditching her car just six miles away from Nancy Neal's house, Agatha caught a train to London to stay the night in Watts' house. Watts would then give her the money that she needed for her stay in the spa. Cade came to this conclusion after persuading Nan Watts, uh, Nan Watts' daughter, Barbara, to go through her mother's files, apparently finding evidence in diaries. Again... It's not much of a mystery if the cops just went to the spa that she yeah. left the note with. If they just had gone to the place on, I think it was day three, mm. they would know where she was, yes. I mean, if the cars had damage and she's well off, she could have just <clears throat> had the damaged car, pulled over and went, ah, stuff, like just frustrated, mm. got out, and I'm going to a spa. Yeah. Left a note. Because mm. if you can't drive the car any further or anything like that, like. And she's obviously going through a bad time. Yeah. So. Yeah, so doubters of this theory state that for someone as private as Agatha, it seems quite an elaborate and public way to handle outing a cheating dog. (laughs) Those who believe this theory say that, yeah, that's kind of the point, though. She'd been hurt and she wants to make him pay for it publicly. Supporting that in that like theory, I would say, obviously, she's a very famous and well-known mystery writer because she's able to come up with those stories and twists and plans and all that kind of thing. So I'd say she has the potential to come up with that plan. Again, she left a note. Told everyone where we, she was going. F- that we know at least two people. I don't know what the third note said or yeah. of where she was mm. and where she was going. If people had just done their job. Yep. Looking at you, 1920s police. Yeah, then Put your Ouija boards away <laughs> and just follow. <laughs> Guys, I just really want to have a seance, all right? No, nah, this letter's fake. You wouldn't. You would know it wasn't fake if you went to the damn yeah. spa. Even if you think it's fake, just go check. Yeah. How hard could it be to send someone to a spa in Yorkshire? Uh, I'm, I don't want to be stuck on the same thing over and over <laughs> again, but it's a pretty good piece of evidence to do, to refute some of these yeah. theories. And very simple. Mm. Mm. Third and final theory: she done went crazy after the crash. Agatha herself would put this theory forward in the only time she would ever speak publicly about the incident when she spoke to the Daily Mail in February of 1928. She would only do the interview as she had been continued to be hounded by the media and public who believed she had faked the disappearance. Agatha would tell the interviewer that she had been suffering from uh, from insomnia in the lead up to the disappearance, sleeping only an average of two hours per night. She was also known to suffer bouts of depression and was even having suicidal thoughts on the day she disappeared. She stated, I just wanted my life to end. As I passed by Newland's corner that afternoon, I saw a quarry and there came into my mind a thought of driving into it. However, as my daughter was in the car, uh, was with me in the car, I dismissed the idea at once. So where'd the daughter go then? If, so this is the- earlier in the day. Oh, okay. Mm. Remember she put her to bed and then left. Right, okay. Mm. Yep, sorry. I thought she was still in the car when she ditched it. I'm like, well, where was... Yep. We're getting a bit quotey here. Okay. So, I love a bit good quote. Pulled Agatha- straight from Wikipedia. Uh, how dare you? It's from a video on YouTube. 
Agatha would continue to describe what she remembered happening to her, referring to after she left the house that night, she said, All that night I drove aimlessly about. When I reached a point on the road which I thought was near the quarry I had seen in the afternoon, I turned the car off the road, down the hill towards it. I left the wheel and let the car run. The car struck something with a jerk and pulled up suddenly. I was flung against the steering wheel and my head hit something. Up to this moment, I was Mrs Christie. After the accident in the car, however, I lost my memory. I remember arriving at a big railway station and asking what it was, and being surprised that it was Waterloo. It is strange that the railway authorities there did not recall me, as I was covered with mud and I had smeared blood on my face from a cut on my head. Considering everything that Agatha had been going through at this time, with Ryder's block, her mother dying, and her asshole husband, it's not surprising that she was feeling this way. It's surprising that people didn't remember seeing her at the train station, especially with the nationwide ser- uh, when the nationwide search began and her face was all over the papers. The mud and blood might have helped disguise her identity in that situation then? Quite possibly, yeah. Um, or people were just like, let's not get involved. Agatha would continue to describe her experience. I then remember arriving at the hotel in Harrogate. I was still muddy and still showing signs of my accident when I arrived there. I had now become, in my mind, Miss, Mrs. Teresa Neal of South Africa. As Mrs. Neal, I was very happy and contented. I had become, as it were, a new woman. And all the worries and anxieties of Mrs. Christie had left me. When I was brought back to my life as Mrs. Christie again, many of my worries and anxieties returned. And although I am now quite well and cheerful, and have lost my morbid tendencies completely, I have not quite that utter happiness of Mrs. Neal. Seems like she had a bit of a fondness for that time that she spent without her own memories. Well, and it did. almost seems like she wishes she was not herself. Well, she just said it when she was that other woman, mm. Teresa. She had no worries. She mm. didn't have the pressures of a book. Didn't have a husband cheating on her. Didn't have writer's block. Well, the pressures of the book, I've already said that really, haven't I? Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't, why wouldn't that be freeing? Yeah. We did joke before that she was overworked going surfing around the world, but- like you said, in this situation, they had all those things, mother dying and all that. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. And that's what I called it, just like I called the uh, bombing birds. <laughs> that was a great call that you made that episode. Critics of Agatha's account of her stay in the hotel state that it seems far-fetched that she would read accounts of her disappearance in newspapers, especially seeing her own face on the cover, and still keep the illusion within herself that she was Mrs. Neal. Agatha stated in her interview, I read every day about Mrs. Christie's disappearance and came to the conclusion that she was dead. I regarded her as having acted stupidly. I was greatly struck by my resemblance to her and pointed it out to other people in the hotel. It never occurred to me that I might be her, as I was quite satisfied in my mind as to who I was. Can you just imagine you're at a day spa? That's a little weird, but I can see what she means. Like, if you were satisfied in who you were even though you've seen this other person going, oh, yeah, like, that's not my life. Imagine her coming up to you in a hotel, though, just being like, look at this idiot. Don't I look like her? Yeah. (laughs) Does she look a bit like me? Crazy. In the interview, Agatha would go on to detail how spending time with her doctors and her relatives that uh, caused her memory of who she was to come back slowly. As you might imagine, most people still didn't believe her, with the Irish Times calling her version of events as complete a work of fiction as anything she has written. Ooh. Sick old timey burn. Yep. Uh, the main reason, uh, the main thing people disagreed with was that Agatha's story didn't account for how she was able to pay for the hotel, new clothes, spa services, and drinks and meals. Agatha did say that she had left the house with sixty pounds, which is three uh, three thousand eight hundred pounds today, uh, which should be enough to cover the hotel for a week. In any case, it's hard to say how much money she actually had on her when she disappeared. Mm. I I don't believe her version of events because the letters were pre-written. True. Um, True. And like how if she didn't know, if she didn't have a memory, how did she know to get to the spa? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it just doesn't. It's not like you got, it's not like she pre-purchased it on a website and printed out the tickets and had it in a pocket when she's yeah. lost a memory. Go, oh, well, I'm, I'll go here. Mm. Um. No, that's a good point. I don't know. Hmm. My theory mm. is that 
Archie had chased her out of the house, run the car off the road, and then she ran away, and then- But why leave, like you said, the note was, was it pre-written or was it written in the car? I would say that she wrote, in my theory, she wrote the letters afterwards, and the letter to Archie was like, you just did this. I haven't decided if I'm going to tell everyone. You better not say anything, because if you do, I'll tell everyone about your cheating, and I'll decide what I'm going to do about it. And that's why she disappeared. In the end. So you're saying she just needed a week away? I reckon she took a week away to decide what she was going to do about Archie. Okay. Mm. Okay. And I reckon he had something to do with the, the car being damaged. And then afterwards, obviously, they split up. Mm. Why continue the story then? Why not just say that? I don't know. Didn't want to deal with it, I guess. Okay. In the end, nobody is quite sure what happened after she disappeared from her house. There are clues, bits of information, but they don't add up to a full story. Regardless, Agatha would live a long and full life after the incident. She would live until 1976, having written a total of 75 novels, with 66 detective novels and 14 short story collections, alongside some other stuff. Her best-selling novel, And Then There Were None, which um, you should actually look up the original title for this. It was a bit of a shock for me to see it on the, um, on the bookshelf at my grandparents' house the other Oh, a few really? months back. All right, looking it up. Hang on. I was just like, oh, wow, that's a lot of books that are the same. Oh, it's the Agatha Christie collection. Whoa, look at the title of this one. Um, but, and then there were none has sold over. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it is on my grandparents' car on bookshelf. It's, it's highlighted when you Google it. Yeah. When you Google, and then there were none original title, comes up with a blurb, and it's yeah. the last three words. Just, just leave it. it. Just leave it. It's People in, can look it up. It's in bold. <laughs> so yeah. That was the first thing that I seen. <laughs> Um, So that book uh, has sold over 100 million copies alone and is the best-selling mystery novel of all time, the sixth best-selling book in total anywhere. The first, like, you know, it's got like common questions in Google. The Mm. first one's like, why did they change the title? And then there were none. Oh, gee, I wonder why. I wonder why. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder why. (laughs) When you look it up, you'll understand. Yeah. (laughs) Just (laughs) please look it up so this makes sense. (laughs) Despite all the success of her narrative works, though, Still, her most intriguing mystery was the one she took part in herself. Oh, deep, boy, deep. And that is how you close an episode. Yeah, good ending, hey? I better yeah. actually close it all down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've cracked my screen. What do you think? Good story, huh? Interesting. I didn't know she disappeared. I didn't know that yeah. was a story that existed. And there's enough meat to it that you're like, oh, I think I understand what's happening here. Yeah, there's a bit of this, a bit of that, and you just, oh, yeah. It's, it's something like what we've done. We can get into it and be like, have our own theories. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like, I like this because it, there's not enough to give you the full picture. So mm. Like, you're not quite sure what happened. Mm. Um, yeah, but good stuff, hey? Good stuff. Good mm. episode. Thanks, boy. That's all right, boy. Thanks for sharing. That's okay. Um, as always, if you would like to hit us up on social media at Cheeky Tales Pod, please do. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It would be fantastic if you could. Uh, it would be nice to get some uh, information from you guys. How are you liking it? What stories would you like to see? Some discourse between us and you. Yeah, what's your theory on Agatha going missing? Um, what's your favourite Agatha book? Hmm, what is your favourite Agatha book? Um, Mine is now and then there were none just because of the- <laughs> Wow, okay. No, just because of the whole- Whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, I retract that statement. <laughs> <laughs> we do post uh, supplemental images on our socials uh, each week. Um, so you can go there and uh, see some little images about this. Maybe get your eye around what a car looked like because it's old timey. Mm, what's um, that photos? There's photos of the car, yeah. Damaged or just the type of car she drove? No, no, the car. Okay. On cool. the side of the road. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What about the police officers doing the seance? None of that, surprisingly. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you could share the podcast with a friend, maybe yes. a mystery enthusiast, mm. Mm, maybe an Agatha Christie fan, mm. maybe someone who loves not being a cheating dog. Okay. That should, that be, should be most, most people. people. <laughs> if, you've, if you're wandering through the house and they have the Agatha Christie collection on the shelf, go, whoa, I've got a podcast for you to listen to. Yeah. Did you know about that? This happened to the, the author. name of the, the books are. And, yep. And then there were none. I bet you if it's an old collection, it won't be there. Nope. Um, yeah, and if you could share us, uh, share the the links to the podcast so that people can get straight there, um, that would be helpful. They're yep. always on the Facebook post. Yep, that would be great if you share the link. The day the episode comes out would be good. Mm, that would be awesome. Boy. And subscribe Boy. in your podcast app. The link will be shareable. I, the day can't, the- I can't promise that. 
I don't know why I've decided I'm just not doing it on the day oh, anymore. I don't know. This week it was like Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but in any, in any case, uh, subscribe in your favorite podcast app because it'll shoot straight into your ear holes then. Um, but yeah, that's that. You're up next fortnight. I am. Mm. And you've got an idea. I do. It's going to be, what's the word? I don't want to butcher it again. Autobi- Autobiographical. Biographical. Mm. So just the story of someone's life. Uh, someone, I guess, who's, I would, would you say a big influence in my life or just an interest? Has a big interest. Has a big, interest. Has a big part of the, a big interest in my life. Mm. So looking forward to researching his life. There you go. There's a tease. It's a, it's a he. Oh, it's half the world. Um, and yeah, we'll get into it next episode. All right. Well, we'll see you then. See you in a fortnight. Good night. Good night, everyone.